Hello and welcome to JXJ Aviation. In this video, we will be looking at the basics of turboprop engines. First, let's take a look at the different types of gas turbine engines which can be installed on an aircraft. We can have turbojet, turbofan, turboprop and turboshaft engines. In this video, we will look at turboprop engines as shown on this aircraft. We will see how the thrust is created, the basic construction of a turboprop engine, and why they are used on smaller, short range aircraft. First, let's see the principle of thrust generation on a turbofan engine and a turboprop engine. If we apply Newton's second law, the thrust force is equal to the mass of air entering the engine multiplied by the acceleration. Now, if we consider a turbofan engine, a small mass or quantity of air enters the engine which is accelerated to a much higher value inside the engine causing an increase in the thrust force. If we consider a turboprop aircraft, we have a propeller which creates the thrust. Here, a large quantity of air or mass of air is accelerated by a small value which causes an increase in the thrust force. So in a turbofan, the thrust can be increased by increasing the acceleration of air. But in a turboprop, there is a limitation on the mass of air being accelerated. So it produces lesser thrust. Now let's look at the construction of a turboprop engine. The turboprop engine can be divided into two major sections. The engine core, which is similar to a gas turbine engine, and a propeller, which is connected to a turbine driven shaft. Let's look at these sections in more detail. The engine core. This consists of a compressor, which is used to compress the air or to increase the pressure of the air before they are sent for combustion. Then we have the combustor which consists of fuel nozzles, igniters and combustion chambers. Here fuel is sprayed which mixes with the high pressure air and gets burnt inside the combustion chamber. In the combustion chamber the pressure and the temperature of the gases increase. The high pressure gases are then allowed to expand in the turbine section which causes the turbine to rotate. This will cause the compressors to rotate. These components are similar to a gas turbine engine. On a turboprop engine, there is an additional turbine called as the drive turbine. Here, the gases expand further, causing a decrease in the pressure and the rotation of the turbine. This turbine extracts almost all the pressure energy from the incoming gases, so very little thrust is generated at the exhaust. This turbine rotates at a very high speed, so it cannot be connected directly to the propeller as this will cause the blades to stall. So the turbine is connected to a reduction gearbox. This reduces the speed of the shaft so the propeller operates more efficiently.
Now we will look at the propeller section. The propeller consists of a series of airfoil shaped blades connected to a hub and assembled on a shaft coming from the reduction gearbox. In modern turboprop aircraft, the blade angles will vary depending on the throttle setting. There are different blade angles for different settings such as ground idle, feather, power, flight idle and reverse. Now let's see how the thrust force is created on this engine. As the drive turbine rotates, it extracts most of the energy from the high pressure gases. So very little thrust is created at the exhaust. The drive turbine rotates the propeller which creates most of the thrust force on this aircraft. Approximately 80% of the total thrust is created by the propellers and 20% of the total thrust is created by the exhaust gases. Now let's do a simple comparison between aircrafts having turboprop engines and aircrafts having turbofan engines. On a turboprop, since most of the thrust is created by the propellers, the turboprop engines are more efficient when operated at lower altitudes, where the density of air is more when compared to higher altitudes. The thrust created by a turboprop is lesser than the turbofan engine, so the aircraft speeds are slower. Aircrafts with turboprop engine can take off and land on a smaller runway. But the biggest advantage of a turboprop is that the fuel consumption is much less when operated on short routes. This means less operating cost for the company. So the turboprop aircrafts can be found on smaller short range aircraft as they are most efficient for these kind of operations. So that's all for my video on the basics of a turboprop engine. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, do subscribe and you can continue watching some of my other videos as well.